Good morning all, nice to see all of you folks. Good to see you this morning on a little Grace Midweek. And I'm thinking to myself, how in the world did it get to be 9 o'clock already? I just <laughs> I looked at my watch and it was like 20 seconds after 9 o'clock or so. And I'm thinking, hey, I gotta go. So it's good to be with you this morning. Yeah, nice to see all of you this morning. Thanks for tuning in. Hi, Denise, nice to see you. Good to see all of you folks. We've got a good one this morning, talking about little children this morning. How about that? <clears throat> oh, there's something to talk about. Now listen, we, uh, I want you to get your favorite cup of joe, whatever it is, in whatever container you got, and uh, let's enjoy this time together. Give me like 15 minutes of your day is all I'm asking. In fact, the matter is, you can do whatever you want to do while this is going on. You are welcome to curl your hair. You're welcome to... Do whatever. You can shave if you want to, guys. Just give me a little bit of time. But it's really good to be with you. But if you want to sit down with the Word, I'm good with that, too. That's my preference. Nice to see all of you. Hi, Star. Mary, good to see you. God bless you. Get your favorite drink and sit right on down for a little Grace Midweek. It is Wednesday again. I think last week, I think last week I was outside. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> and more snow is on the way. Hi, Joyce. Good to see you. I'd say winter is not quite over yet. Came in like a lamb, and uh, it's doing a little roaring in the middle of the month here. And uh, maybe it'll go out like a lamb, too. Why not? Hi, Joyce. Good to see you. Susie, God bless you this morning. We have got a good one this today in Mark, chapter 10 in Mark. If you've got your Bibles, you've got your, your notepads, got your electronic devices, Let's go to Mark chapter 10. Hang on. It's been kind of a chaotic, chaotic morning for me. I'm thinking, man, oh man, things just don't seem to be going right. But I did find time to ask the Lord's blessing upon this. I did find time to ask the Lord to anoint this, because I've told you before, I can't do this without the Lord. So I did find time to do that, but uh, we have just been going all kinds of different directions. Nothing seems to be working quite right, and that means it's a good one this morning. Hello, Rosalie. Nice to see you this morning. So if you've got your electronic device, as I was saying, turn with me to, with me in Mark chapter 10. We're going to get started. How about one more drink of Joe, and then we'll go. How about that? Mark chapter 10. Verses 13 through 16. Are you ready to go this morning? Thanks again for joining me on a little Grace Midweek. We do this every Wednesday morning at 9 bells, 9 o'clock straight up Central Time. And uh, you're going to lose an hour of sleep this week. Don't forget that because we're going to spring up this Sunday. And I love that because I love sunshine. I love an extra hour. Just give me one more hour of sunshine. And uh, that's coming. I'm telling you. But that's Sunday for today. Let's go in Mark, chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. Then they brought little children to him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased. And he said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them. For of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, will by no means enter it. Wow, that's pretty strong. Let me say that again. Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. Wow. Powerful stuff this morning. Carrie and I raised four kids. We raised four kids, and... Um, and I give her all of the credit for that because uh, I wasn't at home much. Uh, for most of my life, I've worked a couple of different jobs. So I've worked the evening jobs just to make ends meet. As I said in the devotion, to keep that nasty wolf away from the door, I, uh, I've worked two jobs. So I give her all the credit for uh, raising children. Um, it just is. You know, I thought the entire time that I had the more difficult job because why not? I mean, I'm the one out there uh, doing manual labor working and, and even though she's home with the kids, I'm the one out there bringing home the uh, the bacon, so to speak, 
I've got the more difficult of the two jobs. Everybody knows that. And uh, it's amazing to me how many times I think I got the, the, the harder part of the job and I'm good with it. You know, we've moved a few times in life. And when you move and when you do things like, like a remodel and you have to pack things up and move them out and then move them back in, I've moved and I thought the one lugging the boxes has the bigger job. I mean, how hard is it to put the stuff in the box and close the lid? The one lugging them, picking them up, putting them on the truck has the bigger job. Uh, it just is. Everyone knows that. Until one time I was actually moving my office from one location to another, and it was my job to somehow, I realized the secretaries, yeah, they're not doing this. So it's all coming down to me. And, uh, and I began to try to get boxes and put stuff in boxes. And I realized right then, sometimes we think in our mind, <clears throat> this is the most difficult job. And then we are soon find out that, you know what, the one taking the little trinkets and the stuff, the books and the stuff and putting them in boxes and sealing the boxes up, I will much rather lug them than I will to load them. I learned that. I learned that uh, that's the most difficult part. And it's the same way with the children. I thought the one out making the bread, making the money for the little, little guys and girls to, uh, to eat, I thought that was the harder job. And now I can easily admit I was wrong on that. Staying home with the children and teaching the children is the most difficult job I've ever seen. I now watch grandkids in my older age. I watch grandkids and I realize raising kids is a young person's game. I get wore out quickly. I mean, it's like I love these little guys and gals. You just love them. You miss them when you don't have them. But then you give me 20 minutes with them, and I'm thinking, I'm not cut out for this. This is so difficult. This is very difficult. They require a lot of time. They require a lot of attention. They require a lot of bone-tiring effort. They just take a lot of effort because they take all you have from you. They take, that's all they know. They take all you have. And, uh, and then they want a little bit more. And although they require all you have, there is something special about kids. And your kids, grandkids, little kids, there is something special about them. They take all you have. And they want just a little bit more. Parents alike cannot wait. Kids and parents alike, they can't wait just to grow up. Grow up to the next phase. Oh, it'll be so great when they grow up. They grow up so fast. They really do. It just goes by in no time. I just can't wait until they're out of diapers. Won't it be great when we don't have to do the diaper thing anymore? I'll be so happy when I don't have to mess with car seats. These heavy coats and car seats are so much trouble. They're so much effort. I will be so glad when these kids get old enough. Be glad when they get old enough to ride a bike where they can kind of entertain themselves. And oh, it'll be great when they can ride a bike and on and on and on, those things that we say that these kids, when they just get to that age. It's interesting that the Lord Jesus even says that uh, you're never closer to him than when you were and when you act like a little child. I find that interesting. You're never closer to him than when you imitate a little child to him. We wait and wait for these little kiddos to grow up. We just can't wait for them to grow up. We want them to grow up and we pray that they accept the Lord Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And then the Lord Jesus has the audacity to say to us that he wishes we would become like little children. I want you to become like inner ch little children. The fact of the matter is it says if you don't do that, you're not going to enter the kingdom of heaven. Now that gets my attention. I know for a fact Paul talks a lot in the Bible about being babes and on milk and the importance of growing up. I gave several scriptures in the devotion this morning. If you get your paper copy, a couple of those were in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3 and, and chapter 14. One of those was in Hebrews chapter 5 about, uh, about Paul saying, you need to stop being babes. You have to grow up in the faith. 
He's talking to people that have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ that don't want to teach, they don't want to do anything, they don't want to step out, they just want to be fed. I get that. Obviously, Paul is correct. But I also want you to hear me this morning that there is also truth in the fact that we need to be able to leave what I'm going to call our cleverness, our sophistication, and our knowledge, and all the knowledge we've, we've obtained, and return to a childlike faith that trusts in the Lord Jesus, that trusts in Him just because He says so. There is something important about coming to the Lord as a child and trusting in Him and forgetting all our wise comments and how much we know and we feel like we have the more difficult job and Lord, we are way past that stage. There is something about returning to Him as a child. Another thing children do, children trust. They trust in those who love them. They trust in them. They, they count on them. They are confident that at dinner time, that the question may be, what are we having for dinner? Not, are we going to have dinner this evening? We grow up in America, and we understand that. And kids are confident that they never think about what it takes to put the food on the table. But they're confident that it's going to be there. They know that their parents love them, they trust their parents, and they know they're going to be fed. They may not know what it is, but they know it's coming. That's a child for you. A child just trusts. He's not in a hurry. She's not in a hurry. They just sit because it's like, and they said they're busy, but they're not in a hurry. Oh, come on, we got to go, we got to go. No, oh, they'll play blocks, they'll play puzzles, they'll do all kinds of things. They may not do that very long, but they're not in a hurry to go out and raise money or, or provide for the family like we are. Parents tell kids something that they trust them. and not, that When parents tell kids that, that, uh, that this is going to happen, kids trust that. And when it doesn't happen, they don't get it because my parents told me that. They loved me to a point when they told me this was going to happen. I didn't question it. I just knew it was going to happen. It's, it's interesting to watch kids around their parents when they get the protection from their parents. They're never more secure than when they're in their parents' arms and in their presence. They're never more comfortable. Sometimes you watch a kid play in a certain part of the house and you move to the next room. You'll see the kid pick up the stuff and move it into the other room because there's comfort. There is security. Maybe they're under your feet, but there is security for a child to be in the presence of their parents. Kids don't have to know the formula as to how this works. How did you calculate that problem? Now, how did you come up with that answer? Kids don't need to know that. They don't need the explanation on how this takes place and how that takes place. And when you push this, does it do that? Kids don't need to know that. All they need to know is that they enjoy the fruit of the event or the item, whatever it is. Maybe it's the circus this weekend. Kids just enjoy the event. They don't need to know how they got there. They rolled them in on trucks. They practiced this for months. All they know is they enjoy it. And as adults, we try to figure out, how did they do that? How did they do that? I need to understand how they do that. Not everything can be explained. Jesus says to all of us, you may not be able to explain it. Just receive it by faith. The Lord Jesus, in so many words, says, you don't have to be able to explain it. I'm telling you, just receive it. Kids just receive. They don't refuse gifts out of pride and are like, I've never accept that gift. I have not paid for that gift. I have not earned or deserved that gift. Well, I can't accept that. I can't take that from you. Kids just take. They take out of your love you give to them and you love watching them. And they can't wait to get to the next package. But the kids, they just take. I want to say to you, we receive the gift of salvation as a little child because we certainly don't deserve it. We haven't earned it. We haven't checked all the boxes. Now I've earned it. You get salvation because it's free from the Lord Jesus. You have to receive it like a little child. 
And I want to say to those of you listening this morning, maybe you need to receive your healing from the Lord as a little child. With that childlike faith that says, He said it, therefore I believe it, I receive it. He said it, and I receive it. I don't have to figure it out. I don't have to connect the dots. I don't have to work the formula. Oh, you can't just come up with the answer. you got to work the formula. you got to show me how you got to the answer. You don't have to do that with the Lord Jesus because it can't be explained. He loves you. He sent his son to die for you. And he's offering salvation as a free gift. And the only thing you have to do is accept it and receive it. And I would say to you, thank him for the gift of salvation. Because of that, eternal life doesn't start 10 years from now. It doesn't start 20 years from now. It starts right now. Eternal life starts right now because of the gift of the Lord. Shall we become like little children? Oh, in a sense, we don't want to be on milk for the rest of our lives. We want to grow up in the Lord. But never forget that thing. Never forget that thing where we forget our knowledge, we forget our sophistication, and we forget having to be proved everything. Let's receive it by faith this morning. Would you join with me in prayer? Father, I thank you for the gift of salvation, and I thank you for all the gifts that you continue to pour out on us. I thank you that the gift of salvation, that the gift of deliverance, is still real today as we open that next package of deliverance. That thing that has us. We've prayed about it 50 times, but we're going to pray about it 51. And it could well be that deliverance is in this next package. Because I know it's a free gift from you, Lord. It could be that the healing that you provide for us is in that next package. And we trust in you. I don't understand how it works. I didn't do all the things and check all the boxes. All I know is we receive it by faith. Greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. That's what the word says. That's the truth. No matter what the enemy tells us, no matter what things tell us, no matter what billboards tell us, no matter what articles we read tell us, the word of God says greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. That is in the world. And we receive that also by faith. The things of that book can be received by faith because they are true and they are real. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I hope you have a terrific Wednesday. There is snow, they say, on the way, three to six inches in St. Joe, Missouri. But you know what? They've been wrong before. So I wouldn't count those chickens before they're hatched. So God bless you this morning. I hope you have a terrific Wednesday. I have enjoyed my time with you this, today. I told you it's been a chaotic morning. But uh, the Lord is still on the throne, and we give him praise and glory for that. Thank you for tuning in to a little Grace Midweek. We will see you this weekend. We look forward to it. God bless you.